Hello and welcome to the fourth video in my series where I explain how I use external controllers to uh, control Microsoft Flight Simulator. This one will again deal with the X-Touch Mini. Um, I'm going to look at the layout that I've designed for the uh, 172 glass cockpit version, try and explain the logic behind it. This is the X-Touch Mini. It's got eight rotary controllers and each rotary controller is a push switch as well. And we've got here 16 further push switches. In fact, there are two layers, two banks, A and B. So we can allocate two functions to every single controller, push switch. So there's quite a lot that we can do with this. And this is the template I'm going to use to uh, record what I've allocated each switch or controller to do. So the first thing I want to look at is the nav radios. And uh, that's got an, two rotary controllers stacked, inner and outer. Uh, a push switch, which changes it between standby and active. And a push switch on the end of here, which switches you between nav1 and nav2. So we'll allocate those to these two rotary controllers here. This one is the megahertz, this one's the kilohertz. And push switch will take us between uh, the radio 1 and radio 2 and swap will take it from standby to active. Next part to allocate is the nav, uh, the comm radio. Again, exactly the same setup as before, an inner and outer a rotary controller, a button which switches between standby and active, and the push controller here to switch between COM1 and COM2. So we'll allocate these two in exactly the same way as we have with the nav, but this time for the comm radio, megahertz, kilohertz, switch between one and two, and swap between active and standby. Next thing to allocate is the heading bug over here. So a rotary controller that moves the heading bug around and a push button on the top, which will automatically sync it with our current heading. So we'll allocate those functions to this one, heading and sync next feature is the altitude selector and this controls here our target altitude and it's very simple it's got the inner and outer rotary controllers one controlling a thousand feet and one controlling a hundred feet so we'll use these two rotary controllers one for a thousand and one for the hundred Last one to allocate in bank A, layer A, will be the inner one here, the course, and that sets the uh, bearing for VOR1. So we'll allocate that to the, this one here and call it course one. Okay, so now we're down to the buttons at the bottom. This one here I'll use to emulate these buttons here. Uh, this one here takes a bit of thinking about. There's a vertical speed set for climbs and descents and the flight level change. And both of use this to increase and decrease the values. If it's FLC, it increases or decreases the target air speed. And this one here targets the uh, rate, rate of climb or descent. Um, but we can't have the dual function buttons on the MIDI controller. So we have to use uh, two buttons for this one and two buttons for this one. So allocate these across here, autopilot, toggle heading, nav approach mode, toggle the flight director, altitude hold, vertical nav, which doesn't actually uh, feature yet in the G1000 simulator, but I'll put it here in case it does get developed and the back course button. Over here, here's the flight level control, flight level change, uh, increase and decrease the target airspeed. And I've introduced this extra button here so that I can immediately take it to the best rate of climb speed, the airspeed that gives us best rate to climb. And down here, the vertical speed mode, increase and decrease the, the descent or ascent rate. Okay, so that's all of bank A allocated. So now we'll move into bank B. 
And the first thing to allocate here is the button on the primary flight display, the FMS button here. Again, it's two rotary controllers and a push switch on the end. So we'll allocate those over here. Outer, inner and push. Our layer B is in red text and underneath the controllers. The next one to allocate is the FMS button on the right hand display, the MFD. And we'll do exactly the same over here. Allocate the outer, the inner and the push switch. Next on the list, back to the left hand display, the primary flight display. And this time I'm going to use the outer ring, which is the barrow, the uh, barometer, which controls the uh, pressure in inches mercury. So we'll just allocate that to this one here. There's the barrow allocated. The next one is back over here onto the second, the right hand display. And I can use the rotary to uh, affect the range, the zoom on the map. There is also a function to push, push this and press that to turn it into a, a pan so it moves the map around. Uh, but I haven't allocated them myself to the uh, X-Touch Mini controller. I use those on the stream deck. You probably could do it though. Uh, you can use some of the spare buttons that you'll see later at the end to allocate those functions. But for now, we'll just allocate the range to this one here. And the next one for this button here is still on the right hand gate, uh, screen. But this time we're going to look at the course on this one. And I set that for VOR2, so I can actually set the bearing for that as well. And that gets allocated here for course 2. So now back to these uh, soft push buttons here. And this time I'm going to look at the flight planning uh, buttons here, the direct to flight plan, clear, menu, procedures and enter. And these just get allocated here. There's direct to flight plan, clear. Now you probably know that the clear button has two functions, a, a, a quick press and a long press, one to clear an entry and the long press to put it back to its default setting. So we'll need to allocate two functions to that button later. And here we've got the menu, procedures, enter. And I put a green box around it so it helps me when I'm uh, using the actual device itself to spot the enter button straight away. OK, and that's really it for layer B. We've got this uh, range here of unallocated buttons. So you could use it to allocate the pan to it or you could put the lights, lamp switches, the beacon, strobe, nav lights, landing lights, taxi lights, fuel pump, anything needed switch you could put here. But again, I've used the stream deck to do that, so I haven't used those. Uh, what I have actually got it set for at the moment is the ATC responses. So I've got response one, two, three, four, the most regularly used ones at the bottom. But I've put it up to 10 because sometimes you want to select a, an airport that's further away. So I use all 10 of those for the various ACT responses. OK, so that's really it. That's bank layer A and layer B allocated. Uh, if I put the two together, it looks like this. It looks like there's a lot going on. But remember, it's the above in black is layer A and below in red is layer B. But once you understand the logic that I used, it does help get, uh, find your way around everything. OK, I hope that helps. And next video, we'll start to look at using axes and O's, the software that forms the bridge between the hardware and the software.